today we are going to learn all about dungeons in the Elder Scrolls Online. I'm not going to teach you how to do the dungeons. That is not what this guide is about. There's plenty of great guides out there already about this. What I'm going to tell you about is the differences between the dungeons because I feel a lot of people don't understand. As well, kind of how many people you're supposed to bring into a dungeon, what people are supposed to do while you're inside, and all that good kind of stuff. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the word instanced. When somebody says a dungeon is instanced, it means that just your group members are the only people that are going to be inside that dungeon. There's pretty much a whole bunch of different, of the exact same dungeon and different groups going to each one. So you will never find strangers or people that are not part of your group inside of an instanced dungeon. It just means just your group is there. Or if it's instanced just to you, just you will be there. There won't be any strangers showing up to help you beat those bosses. So it's a best idea with instanced dungeons to actually have the recommended amount of people. So first I'm going to talk about what type of dungeons are there. There are solo dungeons, which are often called delves in Elder Scrolls Online. There is public dungeons, and there is group dungeons. All three of these dungeons are different, and I'm going to go ahead and explain to you just exactly what that difference is. The first one we're going to look at is the solo dungeons, often referred to as delves in Elder Scrolls Online. These, on your map, will look like a torch, like you'll see the icon I'm circling right now. That would be a delve or a solo dungeon. There will be multiples of these in every single zone, wherever you see that torch icon when you start getting close to it. These dungeons are meant to be able to do by yourself, so the mob density isn't so bad, the bosses are doable by yourself when you're at the level that you are in the zone of and all that good stuff. The thing about solo dungeons is they're not instants. So you can run inside, and if everything's dead in front of you, that probably means somebody already got inside just a little bit quicker than you, and they've already mowed down all those mobs. This is good because definitely if you run into some strangers, you can definitely just beat those mobs down faster and get it done. But no worries, if you walk in and you are all alone, there's no other people in there, these delves are meant to be able to do by yourself. The next type of dungeon we're going to look at is a public dungeon. A public dungeon is not meant to be soloed, although if you have a really good build or you're overleveled, you probably could do it. It just means that there's a lot more mobs at once, the mob density is higher. As well, they will have a variety of challenges. There will be different champions or bosses throughout the dungeon, as well, there will be a group boss. Now, the icon to find these public dungeons looks like this. You'll see here I'm pointing over one right now. Kind of looks like a cave entrance. There will be one public dungeon in every zone. Public dungeons will have a couple different achievements attached to them as well. As I mentioned, there's some bosses involved. So there's usually an achievement for defeating all the champions in a specific dungeon, public dungeon. As well, there's going to be an achievement for defeating at least normally three of the champions or the bosses in a public dungeon. There will also be yet another achievement for when you complete the group challenge. The group challenge is an extra tough boss that you almost definitely are going to need help with if you're doing the public dungeon at the level that you are. If you're the same level as the mobs inside the public dungeon, you're probably going to need help. These are not instance dungeons, so you can go inside and strangers who also go inside the same dungeon, you will be able to see, they will be able to see you, you can help each other kill the mobs, it's great. These are definitely meant not to be done alone. You should be entering these with a group. It, there's no real number for how many people have to enter these, but generally you're going to want two or three people at a minimum. This will ensure that you can get that group challenge. Another thing to know about the group challenge or that big boss in the public dungeons is once you defeat them, you're actually also going to earn a skill point. That's why these are so important to go to, because as you're leveling, you can really always use extra skill points. 
So always make sure that you get all the bosses as well. You always do the group challenge, which is just a tougher boss, and receive your skill point. Something the same about solo dungeons or delves and public dungeons is they are both not instanced. As well, this means that these dungeons do not scale to your level. If you go to Oridon, which is a low level area, and you're a veteran rank character, you are going to totally kill all those mobs really easy because they will still be that low level that is acceptable for this Oridon area. These do not scale up no matter what because they are not instanced. The last type of dungeon is a group dungeon. There is one of these in every zone as well, and these will take a little bit more explaining to do. Group dungeons are instanced, which means when you enter, the only people you'll see are the people in your group. All group dungeons are meant for four people. Generally, this means you should have a tank, D two DPS or damage per second, pretty much the damage dealers, and one healer. That is kind of what these are built around, that you should have that amount of people doing those specific tasks, although of course they can be completed differently. The icon for group dungeons looks like this. Something that is different about group dungeons is that these actually scale to your level. Now, it won't always scale to your exact level. The thing is, when you form your group, your four-man group, the there will always be a leader, also known as a crown. When the first person enters that dungeon, whoever is the leader, the mobs inside that dungeon will be the leader's level. So even if I am VR 10, and I am grouped with a couple other people that are VR 5, if, that VR, if one of the VR 5 members has the leader status, when we enter that dungeon, the dungeon will scale to VR 5. Once we are all inside the dungeon, you can give leader to anybody else and it will not change the level of the dungeon. It won't change it. So they could give me the leader status as a VR 10, but all the mobs would stay VR 5. So as you're leveling up, you'll find that there's different tiers of them. So if you start out as a Aldenmary Dominion character, the first group dungeon that you're going to come across is going to be Banished Cells. Once you complete Banished Cells, if you head to your nearest way shrine, you'll also notice that you are able to go to Spindle Clutch, which is the DC first dungeon. As well, you will be able to go to uh, Fungal Grotto. So as soon as you complete your own factions group dungeon you'll be able to take away shrine to the other factions group dungeons as well there's no need to wait until you're in the veteran levels and you can actually access these areas you can go ahead and do them right away with group dungeons the very first time you run through and complete any of the dungeons the quest inside will award you a skill point this is great as well once you reach level 45, you'll be able to do what is known as Undaunted Pledges. These are pretty much a quest every day to go complete a dungeon. There is a regular dungeon pledge, as well there is a veteran dungeon pledge. You see, with group dungeons, there's two different versions. When you turn level 45, you'll get an invitation in your mail to start these undaunted pledges. You just have to bring this letter to somebody and they'll start giving you pledges. Now, there is the normal and the veteran. Every, almost all the dungeons in Elder Scrolls Online, all the group dungeons, have a regular and a veteran version. So you can go inside Banish Cells and do the regular version. This will have the same storyline as when you did it when you were maybe a level 10. Then you can go inside once you're a veteran rank character, and only once you're a veteran rank character, and you can do the veteran version. The veteran version is not the same dungeon with just, you know, harder mobs. It is actually a new story. It extends, it adds on to the original 
dungeon story. It's actually a totally different dungeon with different bosses, with different mechanics, and it is a veteran, so it is definitely a lot harder. So every day there's a pledge. There's a normal and there's a veteran. You can grab the quest, you go complete that dungeon. If you open up your quest log, it'll tell you what bosses you need to kill, and you just go hand it in. You will be awarded either a bronze, a silver, or a gold key. If you completed the regular dungeon pledge, you'll be awarded the bronze key. If you open up your quest log when you actually have that pledge, you'll notice there's an optional step. If you complete that optional step on the normal pledge, you'll actually receive a silver key. On the veteran dungeons, if you do not complete the optional step, you will be awarded a silver key. If you do complete that optional step, which is also kind of known as hard mode, you'll be awarded a gold key. Obviously the gold key is a lot better than silver key. The loot is just a lot better. Once you're a veteran rank player, you're probably wondering, well, if I have to go to the same place for the normal or the veteran dungeon, how do I make it change? This is all done in your grouping tool. Now, only the leader of the group may change this, so make sure you know how if you're the leader. In the center of your grouping tool, you'll notice your dungeon mode. We have normal and we have veteran. This will bring you through the normal version and this will bring you, if you select it, through the veteran version with the harder bosses with different mechanics and the second half of the story. So always just make sure you have the right version of dungeon selected once you're a veteran. As a regular player, you will not be able to go into a veteran dungeon at all, so you won't have to worry about this. If you're normally a solo player and you don't really have anyone to group up with for your group dungeons, there is a group finder in Elder Scrolls Online. If you watch this video that I'm showing you right now, you'll be able to see exactly how to use this group finder to get the best chances of finding a group. 